he, he, he. All persons having anything to do before the Honorable, the Justice E. Susan Gosh of the Superior Court, now sitting at Fall River within and for the Commonwealth, draw near, give your attendance, and you shall be heard. God save the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Court is now in session. Be seated, please. <coughs> Return to Commonwealth versus Aaron Hernandez, indictment 2013-983. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, have any of you seen or heard or read or overheard anything at all about this case or Mr. <coughs> Hernandez uh, since I last inquired? There are no firm responses. Have any of you discussed this case in any way, shape, or form, or Mr. Hernandez uh, with anyone at all since I last inquired? There are no firm responses. And have any of you had any difficulty following any of the court's instructions uh, not to communicate in any fashion or uh, do uh, uh, talk about or look at or listen to or do any research about this case, anything you think could in any way be relevant to the case or Mr. Hernandez? Uh, there are no firm responses. You may call your next witness. Thank you. Ray McDonald, please, Your Thomas, whether your testimony will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God. Yes, I do. Thank you. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Good morning, sir. Could you please uh, state your full name and spell your last name? Uh, Raymond MacDonald, M-A-C-D-O-N-A-L-D. <clears throat> and do you work, sir? Yes, I do. And can you tell us, please, where is it that you work? I work for uh, T-Mobile, the wireless phone company. And um, <clears throat> how long have you worked for T-Mobile? Uh, this month will be uh, 14 years. And can you tell us, please, before you uh, began to work for T-Mobile, what type of work did you do? I was uh, on a police department. I was a sergeant on a police department. And um, I uh, first worked at a, uh, a college on the campus police for almost seven years. And then I worked on the municipal police uh, for about 18 years before I retired. And uh, after that, did you begin working for T-Mobile? Shortly after that, I, I relocated to New Jersey and uh, started working for a company called OmniPoint. And uh, it was a small wireless phone company. And that was bought out by a company called VoiceStream. And um, so I worked for VoiceStream for a while. And then VoiceStream was bought out by uh, T-Mobile. And um, can you tell us, sir, please, what sorts of duties and responsibilities have you had now over the years uh, working for these cellular companies as they've evolved into T-Mobile? Well, when I first started uh, with OmniPoint, I started as a, uh, a program manager. And then at some point along the way, they uh, decided to make me a corporate counsel for, um, for um, Public Safety Affairs, that's what it was called at the time, and um, also uh, for a period of time with uh, VoiceStream. And then uh, they wanted me to relocate to uh, Bellevue, Washington. That's where our corporate headquarters is, and I um, didn't want to go. So I left the company for about a year and a half, and then uh, was hired back. And now I'm a uh, senior manager with the group called the Law Enforcement Relation Group, basically the same group, just a different uh, name. And uh, we are part of the legal department. And our group is responsible for all subpoena and court order compliance uh, that comes in for the company uh, throughout the country. We um, take in subpoenas and court orders. We review that information, process that information, send that information back out to the requesting parties. 
that can be um, law enforcement, can be the courts, can be attorneys, it can be uh, individuals. We do all the emergency work on behalf of the company. Uh, 911 public safety answering points will call our company and ask for um, who the subscriber of a phone is, an address for the subscriber, a location of the phone We um, for emergency purposes. We do all the tracking uh, on behalf of the company of phones. Uh, we'll track the phones for uh, lost hikers, lost boaters, lost children, fugitives. And we do uh, all the lawful um, intercepts uh, for the uh, company throughout the country and technical assistance for law enforcement. We um, attend and do presentations at conferences and hold conferences for law enforcement and training for law enforcement. And we're also the um, authorized custodian of records for T-Mobile and as such testify uh, for them in court. And can you tell the jurors please um, uh, what is your uh, education and then your training uh, to perform these functions as you've described? Well, I have an undergraduate degree from Northeastern University in Boston and um, in criminal justice, and I have a law degree from uh, the Massachusetts School of Law at Andover. And so when you indicated that you were um, <clears throat> corporate counsel, that's also uh, in the capacity of providing um, uh, legal services to the corporation as well? Is that it was, yes. Now, uh, you described that uh, you are, uh, are you yourself a, a keeper of the records of T-Mobile? I am, I'm one of them, yes. And how many keeper of the records are there? From in our group, I believe there's about 70 uh, individuals that work in our group, and everybody in our group is an authorized custodian of records. And about how many times have you appeared in court to uh, provide testimony as the keeper of the record? I'm not sure. I would say well over 400 times. Now, could you tell us, please, sort of uh, what your experience is with the record-keeping system at T-Mobile? Well, uh, we, um, we get subpoenas, court orders in, process that information. We use um, uh, multiple platforms or uh, applications uh, for billing ap applications that we'll go into. Uh, we um, obviously use the computer systems to access that uh, billing information. Uh, we have access to most of the applications uh, in the company for, uh, in order to perform the duties that we do. Form a uh, document. Do you recognize what appears in that document? Yes, I do. And uh, what appears in that document, please? This is this is what we call a uh, our subscriber page. And on the subscriber page, uh, there is certain information in regards to the subscriber and the um, account and uh, the phone number for the account. And. Uh, who is the subscriber uh, that's uh, indicated, and what is the uh, cellular telephone number, please? Well, the subscriber is under the billing account name, and it's Odin Lloyd. And the uh, phone number is next to the word uh, Misden, M-S-I-S-D-N. It's basically just a fancy name for the phone number. Uh, and the phone number is 617-785-3008. And Mr. Uh, Lloyd's address is also listed there as well, is that correct? It is, yes. And can you tell us please when uh, this uh, account in that telephone number was established uh, uh, by Mr. Lloyd? It says date account established was 12-6-2009. And um, that then um, <clears throat> uh, was the uh, active number in uh, June of uh, 2013, is that correct? Yes, it was. Now, 
if I could, I'm going to show you show you exhibit number 158 Blackberry cell phone and That indicates the telephone number of that BlackBerry cell phone there, Exhibit 158, correct? Yes. 203-606-8969, Exhibit 158, correct? Yes. Again, still on uh, exhibit number 158. Show you the contact for O. <clears throat> Telephone numbers 617-785-3008, correct? Yes. Again, exhibit 158, and show you the contact fish 2, and then that's 860-845-4304, is that cellular telephone number, correct? Yes. And then by clicking on this button, activity, and clicking on that bottom button, the text come up, correct? You recognize those as text messages in the cell phone, 158, Blackberry? Yes, they look like text messages, yes. Now. I'm going to go back to the uh, contact information for O. You see that? Yes. No text messages, correct? Correct. I'm going to show you now exhibit number 117.
Just going to show you that same exhibit with the autofocus is interfering with the light print. Do you see a contact name there? Yes, I do. And what is the contact name? This nigga. And can you tell us the cellular telephone number listed for that particular contact? This is 1203-606-8969. And that just on the phone, there's dark lettering and some very light lettering. Yes, that's correct. that at the top there, uh, the, uh, the uh, person, the contact with whom the phone is communicating this. Yes. Give it 117. You see that? Yes. And can you tell us at the top, the, the uh, contact there, that's the same one you just identified for us, correct? Yes. And you see there on the left, incoming text message from that contact, and then on the right, the response is back from uh, the HTC One cell phone, Exhibit 117. Beginning first on June 12th at 11.01 p.m. and then on June 12th at 11.04. Do you see that? Is that a little blurry? It's a little blurry, but I can, okay. I can make the dates, I guess. Mm. Better? Yes. Okay, so beginning on uh, June 12th at 11.01, you see that up at the upper top left? I do. Can you tell us what that says, please? It says, you do that. And then the response? It says, be all done tomorrow. And then um, the response to that? I was gonna slide through. I ain't, I ain't got shit to do. How, how many you got done? And then there is a reply again on June 12th at 11:10 p.m. Correct. Yes. And can you tell us what that reply is? It's, I didn't finish a whole one yet. Maybe half. It's in you. And then right behind that is the next text message at the same time, 11:10. Correct. Yes. And it, it uh, indicates a correction to on. Is that correct? On, yes. Then at 11.18, you see the next text, text message from the phone? Yes. And can you tell us what that is? Can probably finish one in an hour. Now, again, on June 12th, there's a response from uh, that same contact, the uh, 8969 number, correct? There's a response, yes. Yes. And what is that, please? You good? I'll hit you tomorrow. Now, the following day, there's then um, another series of texts exchanged. Is that correct? Beginning at yes, on June 13th at 12:53 p.m. Oh no, I'm sorry. Correct. At, at uh, I'm sorry. 12:52. This text. 12:52. Yes. 
So we begin with that series of text messages back. Uh, at 12:52 uh, p.m. It says, "Not going to be home till about 8." And Response. Then, uh, at 12:53 uh, on June 13th, it says, "Bet." Okay. At 6:26 on June 13th, there's a text outgoing. Correct. That uh, June 13th, 6:26 p.m. Yes. Can you run through those for us, please? It says, uh, "Come a little later, late t late day." Then what? And then on uh, June 13th, 2013, at 8.45 p.m., it says, we good. And then again at 9.36. 9.36, everything's still good. Then again at uh, the following morning, correct? Another uh, series of texts are exchanged. Is that correct? Yes. Can you go through those for us, please? It's on June 14th at 7.21 a.m., I'm off today, whenever you're ready. Then on June 14th at 2.30 p.m., I'll hit you when I'm that way. And June 14th at 2.31 p.m., uh, again, it says, I'll hit you when I'm that way. And uh, June 14th at 3.04 p.m., it says, "Eight." And at 11.23 p.m. on June 14th, this is OMW. Now, there are uh, the following. There's a response to that on June 14th, that Friday, June 14th at 11:25. Correct? Yes. Uh, that exit 18. Correct? Yep. And then now into the early morning of June 15th at 12:23 a.m. and at 12:24. The address 10 Faston Street, Dorchester. Is that correct? Yes. Now, <clears throat> you see that uh, following text message there, Sunday, June 16th in the morning. Yes. I may approach you. I'm going to show you uh, these two records. Do you recognize what's depicted in those two records, please? Yes, I do. And what's depicted in those two records, please? Well, on the uh, first record, uh, where it says combined data uh, detail, LE at the top, uh, this is a um, call detail uh, record, uh, which would have uh, both voice and SMS, which would be text message uh, on it. And it's the activity of the subscriber's phone, and it would have uh, a series of columns uh, on that activity of date, time of the activity, et cetera. Uh, the next uh, form says data detail on top. Again, it's a call detail uh, record, uh, but this would have um, uh, data sessions on it. And again, it, of the uh, subscriber's phone, and it would have a series of columns. And uh, of course, it would have um, uh, dates and times of the activity. Now, the uh, information that's contained in these records, this is the uh, information of uh, T-Mobile, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And is this information uh, relied on uh, by T-Mobile in the normal course of uh, T-Mobile's business? Yes. And it's uh, made at or about the time these uh, transactions actually occur, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And it's maintained in good faith uh, at, um, prior to these proceedings, is that correct? Yes. I'm going to offer these as the uh, next exhibit, if I may. No objection. Mark this the next exhibit. Okay. Um,
If I may, I'm just going to move uh, exhibit number 117 here to the side. And I'm going to start with the uh, portion of exhibit number 255. It's described as combined detail record. You see that? You see that okay oh. on the screen? Sir? Yes. Okay. If we could just want to uh, go through the record um, indicating uh, what each column means. You see that first column there? I do. And uh, what does that uh, column indicate? Well, uh, that's the MISDN, M-S-I-S-D-N, and again, uh, it's the name for the phone number. And the uh, number that's listed underneath would be the subscriber's number. Um, Your subscriber's number. Our subscriber's number, T-Mobile's subscriber's number. And that number would be 1-617-785-3008. And the next column would be the M-Z-I-M-S-I. And then the column after that? Is the IME, I-M-E-I. -E and do those uh, relate to uh, <coughs> serial numbers of certain aspects of the phone? They, they would. The MC uh, the, is the International Mobile Subscriber Identity Number, and that's particular to the SIP card and uh, the account um, um, for, uh, for that subscriber. That would be on the uh, SIM card. The IME, International Mobile Equipment Identifier, it, uh, is, is, is like an um, um, electronic um, serial number that's embedded on the back of the phone. If you took the battery out, that would be on the back of the phone. And those numbers of digits there, that's the actual IMEI, correct? Yes. Now, you're aware on the phone that there's, at the very end, after that uh, 2456, there's one additional number? Yes. And does that number uh, actually, is that actually part of the IMEI, or is that something else, that uh, very last digit? It's, it's something, it's not something that we, that, we, uh, that we would normally look at. We uh, Basically, we just call it a placeholder. And so the actual IMEI is these digits here as they appear, correct? Yes. Uh, beginning with the 3 and ending with the 6 there. That's yes. Correct? Now the next column on the, the uh, phone record, that shows what, please? That's a vent type, and if it's, uh, it says voice, then it's a, a voice call. And uh, the other thing you'd see in there would be SMS, short message service, which is a text message. Now, <clears throat> looking at that event type, the very next column is the start date. And the information in that column gives a date and a time, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And at, in your records, as it relates to the voice calls, uh, what does that start time indicate, please? That start time is based on what we call market time. That would be uh, the uh, time, the switch time of where the uh, phone is at the time uh, within that market area. And on this case, uh, would be uh, East Coast time. Local time or the phone. Local time, basically, yeah. Now, as it relates to the entries of SMS, where it indicates start time, uh, the date and the time there, can you tell us what time zone that is? Those SMSs are, on these records are going to be based on Pacific time because of uh, the way the SMSs are routed. There's a default routing on uh, SMSs, which go out to the server or the SMS um, service center. Um, in, our, in the state of Washington, and it's uh, stamped uh, Pacific time at that point. And so to convert on this record, exhibit number uh, 255, the SMS entries to local time, what do you have to do, please? It would be a three-hour difference. You would have to convert it over to East Coast time. Three you have to add three hours to the time that appears there on the record. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And so just as we're looking at this first page, that very first SMS entry indicates 7, 18, and 22 seconds. Is that correct? Did you see that? Uh, 7, 18, and 22 seconds, yes. Yeah, it's about, what is that, the uh, seventh line down. Is that correct? Yes. You'd have to add three hours to that to get to the actual local time. Is that correct? Yes, you would. And that time that's indicated for an SMS, uh, is that the time that the SMS enters into your system. 
I'm sorry? Now, what is that time described there? That uh, 718 would be the uh, time that uh, indicates uh, uh, when the um, SMS came through our system was time stamped on the uh, West Coast. Now, the next uh, series of columns, can you describe what appears there, please? Well, I'm it's sorry, let me pull it down just a little bit. Direction is, um, if you see outgoing, that's an outgoing call or an outgoing uh, activity. And incoming is, uh, would mean that it uh, came into the subscriber's hands so that's an incoming uh, call or activity. Then the very, uh, the next two columns, please. Connected to, that would be the uh, number uh, that um, the subscriber's phone is connecting to. Next column. Uh, completion status, normal. You may see normal there, you may not see any, you may see NA. Um, uh, some of these columns are just administrative for columns for engineering. Uh, we don't, uh, our group doesn't look at a lot, uh, some of these columns. And the very next column, please. Uh, TAC, it's uh, equipment, and um, it will tell you uh, what type of phone um, that is being utilized. Again, it's um, sometimes uh, it'll pick up the, the type of phone, keying off the IME, other times it may not. The next uh, columns that appear there, please. Home, Rome. Uh, T-Mobile US, that's, that's us, that's our company. Um, you should see that pretty much down the entire column. The uh, next column, first, LAC. Uh, LAC is a location area code. And that will have a list of numbers. And, and then... What's, uh, uh, what's a LAC, please? A LAC is a uh, location area code and um, the reason we have LACs is because the cell ID number, which is the next column over, uh, they will repeat themselves throughout the country and a lot of times within a state. So um, within market or switch areas, um, LACs are assigned to, with uh, cell site ID numbers. And within that area, uh, the cell site ID numbers don't um, repeat themselves. So a LAC is kind of like an area code on your phone. Uh, like if you're 617, we know you're like in Boston. And uh, 201, you know, I'm in New Jersey. Um, so when we match the LAC and the uh, cell ID number and look at the address next to it, that's the only place that that particular cell ID number uh, will be located. And have you caused to be produced a disk uh, containing the uh, T-Mobile uh, cell sites for uh, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts? Yes, I did. Can I show you this item? Do you recognize that item? I do. That's my uh, initials on there. And uh, this describes the location uh, of uh, the cell site locations of T-Mobile in Massachusetts. Is that correct? Yes. And that's a record that's maintained in the normal course of the business? Yes. And relied on by T-Mobile. Is that correct? Yes. It was uh, it's created uh, at or about the time um, the uh, transactions uh, that appear in the record occur, is that correct? Yes. And um, prior to the uh, beginning of these proceedings, is that true? Yes. And I'll offer this as the next piece. Warren, could we come to sidebar? <coughs> Is the next exhibit. Okay. 
<clears throat> now, the, uh, the next uh, um, column, please describe what appears there. Next column is the first cell ID, and that's the uh, cell site ID number. Uh, the, the next column is uh, first net type, and that's just the uh, type of network that the uh, activity was on. Um, sometimes you, you may not see anything in the column at the times, like here you'll see the HSPA+, plus, or you might see 2G, 3G, that's just the type of network that the, uh, on the uh, cell site or the tower that it was um, handling that call. And the next two columns, please. First tower, latitude. That's the uh, latitude uh, of first tower. It's the first tower that the call or activity initiated on. And um, that would be the, that number there is the latitude of that tower or cell site. And the next one, first tower longitude would be the longitude. So you have your latitude and longitude. And if you cross-reference uh, or plot those on a uh, mapping program, that would give you the location of the cell site. Of the uh, first tower uh, in the communication, correct? Yes, of the first uh, cell site the call initiated on. Now, we have that uh, same information if, uh, as it relates to um, uh, the cell site that uh, even if it hasn't changed, it was used in the communication last, is that correct? Yes, this would be the uh, last LAC, last, tower, uh, last cell ID. This is the tower that the um, activity was on uh, at the termination of that call or activity. And then these, the next column after the last uh, tower uh, Longitude indicates market, is that correct? Market, that's just the market area. In this case, it's uh, New England. Then the following uh, is a region, in a just northeast region. And uh, MSC, uh, multi-switching center name. And that's just the name of the uh, switch that was uh, handling the uh, activity. And then the uh, that next column that indicates duration. Can you describe what appears there, please? Uh, duration, um, it's in minutes, but it's uh, broken down to uh, hundreds of a minute on the uh, after the decimal point. <coughs> so um, in the, um, the first one, 0 0.07, that's seven hundredths of a minute, uh, would be four seconds, and which gives you, on the last column, just gives you uh, the call in seconds. And data size would be if there's some type of uh, um, data session or web browsing or, or whatever. Now, See those two uh, rows just above uh, where the ruler is located? Yes. And um, can you tell us, please, uh, what type of uh, communication um, is identified in those <clears throat> two rows above where the ruler is? I mean, the, the first two just above it? Yes. Okay. Immediately above. Okay. On the uh, first one is, uh, well, they're both uh, 
uh, voice uh, communication, so it's a, a voice call. And the communications that appear on this portion of the record, it's fair to say, I, well, I get, what is that? It's a 17 inch piece of paper that uh, your record's printed on there? Uh, yeah, either 14 or 17, yeah. So we'll try and work through it, but if you need to go back up to the uh, column headers, we can do that. Okay. The, the communications that are immediately above uh, those two voice uh, transactions that you've described, those are SMS, correct? Yes, that's correct. And so even though they appear sequentially or in the order of the time on the record, it's fair to say that those SMSs that are above it, you'd have to actually add three hours, correct? Yes, that's correct. And so they fall somewhere after these two voice communications that we're looking at above the ruler, correct? Yes, they would. Now, just looking at those two uh, lines above the ruler, uh, can you tell us what uh, um, initially just uh, that is, those are communications into your T-Mobile subscriber cell phone 3008, correct? Yes, it's a communication uh, with the uh, subscriber's phone of 3008 uh, voice communication. And uh, the very first one indicates in, incoming, correct? Yes, that's correct. And the second one indicates outgoing, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Now, if I move it over a little bit, just so now the uh, columns are showing, or the rows are showing, beginning with the date and the time, and you see that connected to uh, <coughs> numbers there? Yes. Uh, does that indicate something to you, please? It does. And can you describe for the jurors what that indicates to you, please? Well, on the incoming uh, call coming into the uh, subscriber's handset at 10.08 and 47 seconds a.m., uh, that call was, uh, came into the subscriber's handset. And then at 10.09.06 a.m., uh, it indicates outgoing to a number uh, 1805. 637-7249. Uh, that 805 number ending in 7249, sometimes you might see it end in 7243, um, tells me that uh, that's one of our voicemail platform numbers. So what this is showing me is there was an incoming call that dropped to voicemail and the reason it looks like an outgoing call is as it comes in uh, to voicemail, the uh, phone uh, pushes it over to uh, voicemail, and it, uh, in our records anyway, it looks like an outgoing call when it's just being pushed to voicemail. So those two lines read together indicate that on Sunday, June 16th at 10.08 a.m., there was an incoming call from that 8969 number that went to the uh, T-Mobile voicemail of your subscriber ending in 3008, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. An unanswered call? Yes. Just going to move the ruler down to show um, the two lines that follow after that. Do you see that? I do. And can you describe what appears in those two lines, please, beginning with the date and the time? Well, again, on 616 in 2013 at 1010 and 29 seconds AM, uh, there was an incoming call uh, to the subscriber's handset. And at uh, 1010, 48 AM, it was uh, pushed over to voicemail. You see the outgoing, again, to the 805 number ending in 7249. So that's also now a minute or so later that 8969 is calling again and going to voicemail. Is that correct? Yes. Move down to the uh, two lines that are below that. Do you see that? I do. And can you describe what those two lines show? Again, it, uh, on 6-16, 2013 and 10-14 and 45 seconds a.m., Again, an incoming call uh, from the 8969 number, um, dropping into a voicemail at 10.15 at 04 seconds AM um, to the uh, 
805, the uh, 7249 number once again. I'm going to drop down two more lines. Do you see what's depicted there? Yes. And can you tell us what's depicted in those next two lines, please? Again, on 616, 2013, at 1017 and 36 seconds a.m., an incoming call, again from the 8969 number, uh, dropping into uh, voicemail at 1017 and 56 a.m., um, shows the outgoing, uh, dropping into voicemail at, to the 805 to 7249 number again. Now, the very next line uh, after that is an SMS message, correct? On the, on the record. Oh, I'm sorry. You see that? The yes, I do. It is an SMS, yes. And that indicates uh, 1036, but we have to add three hours to that, correct? That's correct, yes. So that, the actual time of that uh, next entry that appears in your record is uh, 136 in the afternoon. Yes, that's correct. So I'm going to go down to the very next in time transaction. Do you see that? Those two lines above where the ruler is there. I do. And can you tell us, please, what appears there? Well, on the first one, uh, it's an incoming call at 616, uh, 2013, 1122, and 33 seconds AM, an incoming call from um, the 8969 number. And then on 616, 2013, at 1124, and 36 seconds AM, there's an outgoing call to an 860 number. Now, that very uh, first line indicates incoming at 1122, correct? Yes. And um, does that call, if I move over along the same path here on that particular call, does that call get connected? It does. And can you tell us for what period of time does that call get connected? For uh, one, uh, one minute and uh, 52 hundredths of a second, so uh, about, about a little over a minute and a half. And that call gets connected at? Eleven twenty-two in the morning of June 16th, correct? Yes. Now I want to take you up to an SMS that appears just um, in the record <clears throat> just after that in the record. Do you see that? I see. Yes, I do. And do you see that, uh, the date and time of that SMS there? I do. Well, can you describe for us, please, what appears there? On uh, 6-16-2013, at 7-28 and 12 seconds AM, there was an incoming uh, SMS uh, from the 8969 number. I'm sorry, and I, I think I indicated just after that. That's 10-28, correct? In the morning, local time. That would be 10-28, yes. Okay, so prior to that call that makes the connection. Is that correct? Um, I don't recall. You'd have to go 11 back. 11.22 is the uh, time that the call makes the connection. 11.22, 10.28. So um, the text would be prior to that, yes. Okay. This is the call here that makes the connection, correct? 11.22 incoming? Yes. And that's the text there incoming at 728, which is 1028 AM, correct? Yes. Now, again, I just want to go back to exhibit number 117. That very top text, do you see that? I do. And can you tell us 
what time is indicated there on that particular text? Uh, 1054 a.m. on June 16th. And uh, that's coming from that contact with the 8969 number, correct? That we previously described? I... Remember we looked I, at the contact for the header there? I, I remember looking at the contact, yeah. I, without the number right there, I, I can't say, but... Now, incoming shows it at what time, please? 10.54 uh, a.m. And um, can you tell us if <clears throat> what would cause a difference between the uh, time of the text in the record and the time of a, of a text appearing on the phone? Well, two things. Um, one would be if the text was on Pacific time uh, and it went to the phone, it would record it on um, whatever time zone the phone was in, in this case, uh, East Coast time. Right. Uh, the other thing would be if it's, um, depending on you know, how much it's off by, or it doesn't really matter, if the phone is off and a text is sent to it, it's not going to load to the phone until the phone is turned back on and it's going to pick up the time uh, the text is loaded to the phone when the phone is turned back on. Again, just on uh, Exhibit 117, that particular contact that we were just looking at there, that's that 8969 number, correct? Yes. Okay. Can you see that okay? I can, yes. Still on uh, Exhibit 117, you see that uh, uh, call, uh, Exhibit 117, you see that uh, uh, call, um, <clears throat> third from the bottom there. To 8969, that same contact, correct? On June 17th at 11:20 a.m., duration zero seconds. You see that? Yes, at June 16th. June 16th. I'm sorry. Did mm -hmm. I say the 17th? Yes. I'm sorry. June 16th. You see that then? That uh, incoming call at 11:22. That's the call you just described. Is that correct? Yes. It actually connected for a minute and 17 seconds. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Do you see this very next call um, incoming on June 16th at 1.24 p.m.? Yes. 
You see the very next call after that, incoming at 1.36 p.m. Yes. Uh, 52 seconds. Do you see that? Yes. Then you see an outgoing call um, at on Monday, June 17th at 12.50 a.m. I do. Duration, eight seconds. Yes. See an outgoing call June 17th at 1.03 a.m. Duration, zero seconds. Yes. And an outgoing call above that, duration, zero seconds. Yes. Again, on exhibit number 117, back to that same contact, the 8969 number, you see this uh, text from 8969 at 9.05 p.m. local time on June 16th, the very top text there. Yes. And can you tell us what that text says? I'm coming to grab, grab that tonight. You gone, you gone be around. I need that, and we could step for a little again. Okay, and going back to exhibit number 255, your record, do you see your uh, subscriber 3008, an SMS at uh, 605 uh, on the record, which is 905 p.m. local time, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Incoming from 8969, is that true? Yes. Now back on exhibit 117, again incoming from 8969 at uh, 9.34 p.m., correct? Yes. And uh, indicating what up? True? Yes. And just looking at your record, exhibit 255, we were just looking at that text. We go down. There's no response from your customer 3008 between the 9.05 p.m. incoming text and now this 9.35 or 9.34 incoming text from 8.969. Is that correct? That's correct. There is a response from the 3008 phone at 9.37, correct? Yes. I where? <laughs> yes. And then from 8969 at 9.39 p.m., that text comes in. Is that correct? Yes. And can you tell us what that text is, please? This is IDK. It, it don't matter, but I'm going to hit you when I'm that way like last time. If my phone dies, I'm going to hit you when I charge it, which will be in a little. Now, <clears throat> Those two texts, the 937 outgoing and the 939 incoming, those also appear in your record. Is that true? Yes. That's the outgoing text for 3008, and that's the incoming text from 8969 at 
uh, 639 in the record, 939 local time. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. <clears throat> Moving down, Sunday, June 16th at 10 p.m., a text from 3008 to the 8969 phone. Is that correct? Yes. <clears throat> I, I don't know anything going on, correct? Yes. And a uh, text from the 8969 phone 13 minutes later indicating what, please? Indicating, uh, I'll figure it out. I'll hit you on way. Showing you there the SMS June 16th, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. local time to that 8969 number. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And the incoming text 1013 p.m. local time incoming. Correct? Yes, <coughs> that's correct. Now, Just showing you there above the uh, <clears throat> above the ruler, uh, June seventeenth now in the morning, twelve fifty and forty six seconds in the morning. An outgoing call from your uh, T-Mobile subscribers phone three zero zero eight to that eight nine six nine number. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And. That's at uh, 12.50 a.m., correct? Yes. And um, just prior to that, <clears throat> you see that uh, SMS outgoing from the 3008 phone to 8969. Yes, they do. And that would have been at 1222 in the morning on June 17th, correct? Yes, that's correct. We still on, correct? Yes. And that call there at uh, 1250 in the morning to the 8969 number we move across Can you tell us the duration of that call please yeah, 11 seconds and that connection time with the network that 0.18 duration uh, 0.18 minutes yeah I mean this this would would include uh, network time also along with the connection time now No text from this phone, 8969, or uh, 3008 to the 8969 number after that text at 1222, correct? You can't go further. Yeah, it doesn't appear to be anything on the phone, no.
to show you this call here. See what's uh, in that call? Just above the ruler? Yes. Can you tell us what's in that call just above the ruler, please? It's an incoming call from uh, 4304 number. Incoming to your uh, subscribe. 3008, that yes, correct? Yes, that's correct. And as we move across the record, Duration of that call, please. Uh, 24 seconds. <clears throat> See that call there in the record? Yes. That's uh, a voice call as well, is that correct? It is, yes. And can you tell us where that call is coming from? Uh, again, the uh, 4304 number. And that's at 224? 224 and 32 seconds a.m. on 617. And I'm sorry, I missed one in the in between that uh, 122 call and that that one there is at 152 in the morning. Is that correct? 152 a.m. Yes. Both incoming to uh, your uh, customer 3008. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. You see that call there? I do. Can you tell us what that call is, please? It's an incoming voice call at 2.25 and 16 seconds a.m. on 6-17-2013. You see that call there? I do. Can you tell us what that call is, please? Again, on 6-17-2013 uh, at uh, 2.32 and 1 second a.m., an incoming call to our, our subscriber at 3008. Now, Remaining um, on this particular record here now, um, we skip down to, do you see those two I do. lines above where the ruler is? Yes. And can you tell us uh, what those two lines above the ruler are, please? Well, it's an uh, incoming call at, um, to our subscriber at uh, 617. Uh, the uh, on 617 2013 it's 730 and 17 seconds a.m. Uh, from uh, a 9171 number and then at uh, 730 and 49 seconds um, it rolls over the voice nail to the 805 7249 number and so <clears throat> now as we move forward on the morning of June 17th that's the uh, very next call after that 232 uh, incoming call from 4304, is that correct? Yes. And that's an incoming call that goes to voicemail, correct? Yes. The very uh, next two lines, do you see that? Yes. And uh, tell us what that is, please. On 617-2013 at 12.05 and 36 seconds p.m., uh, it's an incoming call from a 2868 number, and at 12.06.08 p.m., uh, it uh, rolled over to, to voicemail to the uh, 805-7249 number. The next um, voice um, calls on the record. On the top of the next page, do you see that those two lines above the ruler? Yes, I do. And can you tell us what that is, please? On 617, 2013 at 822 and 36 seconds p.m., uh, an incoming call from a 9171 number, uh, rolling over to voicemail uh, at 823, uh, 08 p.m. Next two uh, lines on the record, please. On 617, 2013 at 1047 and 05 p.m., an incoming call from a 6344 number uh, rolling over to uh, voicemail to the uh, 7249 number. Next two lines, please. 1048 and 34 seconds p.m. on 617 2013. An incoming call from a 4376 number, uh, again rolling over to voicemail at 1048 and 34 seconds p.m. Uh, to our 7249 number. So, and you've had an opportunity to look at. Uh, the remaining portions of these records, is that correct? Yes. It's fair to say that after uh, 2.32 in the morning on June 17th of 2013, to the extent that you see these outgoing entries, were all of those entries related to incoming calls 
It went to the phone's voicemail. Uh, to the best I, I recall, yes, that's okay. that's what occurred, yes. You want to take another opportunity to take a look at the, the actual record? Sure. That would be the case, yes. Now, I just want to direct your attention to the portion of Exhibit 255 above the ruler. Do you see that? Yes, I do. And can you describe what appears there, please? This on 617, 2013, at 12.07 and 30 seconds a.m., there was a uh, outgoing SMS or text message uh, to an 8341 number. And that 12.07 a.m., that specific time, Correct? Yes, it is. And so local time here, that was at 3.07 in the morning. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And that's outgoing from your subscriber, 3008, to that number, 8341, correct? Yes, that's correct. I'm going to show you this next text message, <coughs> or this next line. Do you see that? I do. And can you that? I do. And can you tell us? would appear on it, correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, but on that record, does that record list the cell sites for um, the text messages? No. Yes, I do. What is that document? These are T-Mobile records. Um, these are um, switch records. We call them switch records uh, that um, have certain information that is uh, <coughs> saved in a server that's uh, pulled off uh, the switches. And specifically as it relates to these, um, this uh, set of documents that I've handed you, you've had an opportunity to take a look at that. In fact, you, you uh, caused these to be produced, is that correct? Yes. And do these uh, documents detail <clears throat> the cell site that was used to connect the telephone 3008 to the T-Mobile network in the course of those um, five text messages, I believe we just looked at from the early morning of June 17th, beginning at 3.07 a.m. and ending at 3.20 3 yes, that would be how we would get text, uh, the cell site information for a text message would be utilized in this uh, application. And are these records relied on uh, by T-Mobile in the normal course of its business? Yes. And are they made at or about the time of the, uh, the uh, activity that's depicted in these records? Yes. They're kept in good faith in the normal course of business, yes. is that correct? Yes. Prior to the beginning uh, of this uh, action or this, these proceedings, is that correct? Yes, they are. I'm going to offer this as the next exhibit, please. No objection, Ron. That's the next exhibit.
just now showing you <coughs> which is marked as exhibit 257. Um, do you see that, sir? I do. And if I could just uh, have you um, uh, this line here, do you recognize what's depicted in this particular line, please? Yes, I do. And what's depicted in this line here, please? That's the message time stamp. Uh, that would be the date and time of the uh, text message. And in this record, is this time in local time? It is for the text. It's local, yes, because it's uh, stamped, uh, time stamped at the switch. When the call enters into the network, when the or the text, text message enters into the network. Yes, that's right? correct. And so on this record, unlike 255, the time that's depicted here is the uh, real time local time. Is that correct? Yes. And can you just um, looking at that particular time stamp, uh, tell us what that timestamp says, please. Okay, we, first two digits is the year, so this would be 2013. Uh, the next two digits uh, is the month, so 06 would be uh, June. Uh, the next two, two numbers, 17 is the day, and then uh, the rest is the, uh, the time. So this would be 03, so it would be 3 o'clock uh, in the morning. 0307, so uh, seven minutes after 3 a.m. and 30 seconds. And that's the time stamp that is used for the purposes of these records, Exhibit 257, correct? Yes, that's correct. And looking at the top now, this very first line, you see that? I do. That tells you what type of record uh, this is, uh, or what kind of uh, activity on the phone this is record is documenting, is that correct? Yes. And can you tell us uh, what is indicated there on the record? But it's SMS, which text message, and MO is uh, uh, mobile outgoing. So it's an outgoing text message. And now, this particular line here, do you see that? Yes, I do. And what does that uh, tell you? That's the call number. That's the uh, the number that the text message is going out to. And does this record then give the uh, um, the same information that appeared uh, in the cell site information of uh, Exhibit 255, the lack in the cell ID? It does. And can, uh, are these two lines here? Location lack and location CI, uh, where this record shows um, the uh, cell site is. Yes. And can you explain what appears in those two lines for us, please? Well, on the lack location lack, you have eight E as echo uh, nine zero, and location CI cell uh, cell number uh, you have FBC nine. Uh, those. Those digits are uh, what we call hexadecimal. Uh, they're in hex format, and you have to convert them over to a decimal format. And uh, so uh, you take the 8E90 and convert it from hex to decimal. Uh, it'll give you the, uh, the numbers that you would need to identify the, the lack. And you would have a set of numbers similar to what was on the, uh, the, uh, the other exhibits for, uh, the, cell, uh, for the lack. The same for the location uh, cell identification number. Uh, it's in hex. It's in hex format, and you just have to convert it over to um, sorry decimal format. Fair to say that's just a different math, mathematical expression of the same number that appears on the records in Exhibit 255. Yes. And this same um, listing of <clears throat> cell site locations in 256 is then used to identify those cell site locations, is that correct? Yes. After it's converted to the same mathematical format as 255, is that true? Yes, that's correct. Now, that was the uh, uh, 0307 text. This next item here, does that also show? It's an outgoing uh, SMS text message. And 
at the time of that text message? It would be uh, 2013, June 17th at uh, 03116, is that correct? 03116 seconds, so uh, 311 is 16 seconds in the morning, yes. And that also shows the uh, cell site uh, lack and um, identifier, is that correct? It, it does, yes. This next entry here. It's an SMS text message, and now you have MT. That's what does that indicate? That's uh, mobile terminating, it means it terminate, terminated at the subscriber's handset. So um, at the uh, 3008 handset, uh, so it's an incoming text message. And I, I apologize, just in the record before, I neglected to show you the call number in that second uh, outgoing. That was the same one as the first outgoing, that um, 8341 number, correct? Yes. And on this third uh, text, this what you've described as an incoming, that's from that 8 uh, 341 number, correct? Yes. And shows the uh, time um, there, is that true? It does, uh, June 17th, 2013 at 319 and 23 seconds a.m. And again, that shows also the location of the cell site, correct? Yes, it does. This next record uh, shows what? It's a SMS text message uh, MO, so it's mobile outgoing. It's an outgoing text message. And again, shows the time. Is that correct? Yes, um, on um, June seventeenth, uh, two thousand thirteen, at three twenty-two and ten seconds a.m. And shows the again the cell site location. Is that true? Yes. Continuation of that record onto the next page shows that that's going to the same phone, correct? 8341. Yes, that's correct. This next record, what does that show? It's an SMS text message, uh, MT, mobile terminating, so it's an incoming text message. And it shows the uh, date and time of that incoming to your 3008 number, is that correct? Yes, June 17th, 2013 at 322 and 40 seconds a.m. And it shows uh, where that uh, text message was coming from. Is that true? Yes. That same 8341 number? Yes, that's correct. And it shows the uh, cell site location for that uh, communication. Is that correct? Yes, it does. This next record, what does that show? Uh, it's an SMS. Uh, <coughs> text message, mobile, uh, outgoing, so it's an outgoing text message. And it shows the uh, date and time that that occurred, is that true? That was June 17, 2013 at uh, 323 and, uh, and 0 seconds uh, a.m. And it shows the uh, number to which that uh, message went? Yes. That same 8341 number? Yes. Is that correct? That's correct. And it also shows the uh, location of the cell site? It was used there, is that true? Yes. Now, in addition to uh, call data records and uh, text records, <clears throat> does uh, T-Mobile keep track of uh, additional um, cell sites that are used for certain phone activity? Yes. And could you describe what that is, please? Uh, well, uh, another uh, um, set of information that, that we can pull is uh, for data, um, data streams, uh, web browsing, et cetera. 
And can you describe what that means as far as what the phone is doing and what, uh, how it's communicating with the network? Well, I mean, you can go on data sessions. You, um, you know, I mean, there are all kinds of things you can do. Just about whatever you can do on your computer uh, nowadays, you can do on your phone. Uh, you can actively uh, go on, on uh, uh, the Internet um, and, and load applications, or you can have things streaming in the background, you know, if you had, I don't know, Pandora or uh, maybe location uh, information for your phone uh, that may run in the background, or you may actively uh, be in and out of the, uh, different data sessions. And is it fair to say that <clears throat> sometimes just having an app, well, we're dealing specifically with smartphones like this HTC One phone, correct? Yes. And is it possible just to have an application open in the phone and have it constantly communicating or frequently communicating with the T-Mobile network? Yes. And um, uh, when meaning just operating or open um, without any activity by the user? Yes. And when that application or any applications like that communicate to the T-Mobile network, does that uh, happen through that same uh, cell site as you've described uh, previously? Yes. And um, the second portion now of uh, exhibit number uh, 255, could you just describe uh, what uh, that is, please? Uh, this again is what we would refer to as called detail session, uh, called detail uh, information, or this, in this case would be uh, data. So this is a report similar to the other report for voice and SMS, but uh, this would uh, uh, be for data. And. Just uh, now looking at that portion of the record, Exhibit 255, could you just uh, walk us through what the, uh, each one of those columns is, please? Uh, well, again, on top you have the MISDN, M-S-I-S-D-N, and um, that is the uh, subscriber's phone number, 1-617-785-3008, uh, and should be the same all the way, all the way down the record. Um, the next column, opening uh, record opening time, that's the date and time uh, that the uh, session would have started. And um, access point name is, that's just a platform. Uh, here it says fast.t-mobile.com, and that's just a, uh, a data uh, platform uh, going through T-Mobile. Uh, and again, we have the IME, the IMEI, International Mobile Equipment Identifier number, again, like the uh, electronic serial number uh, that's embedded on the back of the phone. Um, and then on this record, uh, and, and, um, it says device full name and gives you the uh, name of the uh, equipment, the phone, the HTC One. And some of these columns we don't deal with uh, very much, but cause for uh, the closing, these are administrative type uh, changes or they just might be network functions that are, are going on. Um, same with the charging, we don't, uh, we don't look at that. Our group doesn't look at, at that. And here it says instead of LAC, it says SAC, so it's, uh, but it's the same kind of thing. It's the uh, cell site, or instead of the CI for cell site identification number, it'll say SAC but that's the uh, cell site uh, identification number under the cell sack. And then you have your first LAC. Um, that's your location area code again. Uh, then your region, northeast, your market, New England. Uh, MSC, multi-switching center, it's just a vendor. In this case, it's Cisco. And um, your first net type. This is the type of uh, network that's covered, that's, uh, that the... Uh, 
that is going out on. You can see it could be 2G, it could be HSPA, it could be 3G. Um, and the GGSN is just the, uh, it's going to be the New England uh, uh, type switch that uh, it's going to be going through. Record type, we don't look at that very much. Vendors, just a number for the vendor. Uh, duration in minutes. Um, and again, that's going to be uh, down to hundreds of minutes after the decimal point. And the last uh, are just the um, uplinks and downlinks. So we don't we don't really look at that too much in our group. Yeah. Just as it regards the. Um, the date and the time there. That's when the uh, whatever the phone is doing to the uh, T-Mobile network uh, began. Is that correct? Yes. And again, that doesn't necessarily require the holder of the phone to do anything affirmative in order for that connection to be made. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And that particular time there, um, is that the local time? Yes. I'm just now back on that same portion of Exhibit 255, the data detail that indicates that uh, your subscriber 3008 I uh, had uh, data on June 17th of 2013 at 2.28 a.m., is that correct? Yes. And um, and then going to the next page, See that now, the top uh, column of the next page? Yes. You are saying customer 3008, correct? Yes. And again, data connecting at uh, 2.32 a.m. on June 17th of 2013, is that correct? Yes. And that shows the um, cell site that was used for that communication, is that correct? Yes. And again, um, we go further down here, the uh, third row, 232 AM. Cell, cell phone is communicating data-wise with the uh, T-Mobile network, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And that indicates uh, uh, cell site locations for uh, that uh, communication, is that correct? Yes. As we go down, there's further data uh, being communicated with the T-Mobile network during the early morning. Uh, 
of June 17th, correct? Yes, that's correct. And it actually... Continues down in that manner through 317, correct? Yes. And then the phone shows that there's a data activity beginning uh, after 420 uh, a.m., 421 a.m., correct? Yes. <clears throat> then 506 a.m., correct? Yes, that's correct. And then now 640 a.m., sort of on a um, much less frequent basis at that point, correct? Yes. Jurors that left the courtroom. Close in session, be seated, please. Is there a particular time that you think we should let the um, Portuguese interpreter know to be back in the courtroom? Thank you, Ronald.